what you want, take what you want, ay. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Make what you want, take what you want to, ay. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Magnificent rap, different day. Act timid while black, living and say. Keep up with a style they never had. Don't mean to brag, I bring it back with pen and pad. All aboard, who's ready to ride with them? Whole sea of greatness, ready to dive in it. Make what you want, take what you want to A. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Three solid days of competition, hundreds of games, and 32 finalists all under one roof. And now we have our final two, and what better setting than the iconic O2 Arena in London. This is the FIFA E World Cup Grand Final. I'm here with Spencer FC, and look at this, Spencer. Just take a little look around at what this looks like. This is absolutely incredible. London's O2 Arena, packed out, ready for our two finalists. The final made over two legs. Whoever wins it will have their name engraved on this trophy. And whatever happens, we will have a new winner, won't we? We will. Yeah, we've got two guys who've never been in this exact position before. We've got uh, Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia have won. They've had a different representative win it from before. Belgium never been in this spot before. So, big opportunity. The quality that we've seen over the past three days has been quite amazing. The 32 that made it to the finals. Yeah, I mean, that's what you get when you have such a kind of uh, complex qualification process that we've had. We've, we've had so many different players, quality players, not even make it here. That, that maybe on another day might have made it. But the 32 that got here all deserved it. And I think we've got the right two finalists. It's going to be difficult to call it, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't ask you to necessarily but these two players are both so steady in their own right well they've both been unbelievable i mean pina is the only person left who's not lost a single game throughout the group stage or any part of this tournament Dasari did lose one in the groups but obviously recovered from that so i think i feel like Dasari will be considered the favorite but i definitely wouldn't count out pina all right let's have a little look at how they made it to the final then started on the group stages and then reached the knockout neither of those route those routes are very easy are they spencer no, I mean, you don't get here by accident. Everyone that makes it to the final thoroughly deserves it. And Dasari had to get through Kurt, who was just playing unbelievable FIFA yesterday, defeating the reigning champion Gorilla on his path to the semi-finals. But Dasari won out on that side. And Pina had to knock out Marcuso, who'd been able to knock out pretty much everyone's pre-tournament pick, Nicolas from Argentina. So, yeah, both the guys picked up huge wins on the way to the final. And Stefano doing it unbeated as well. Um, let's have a little look at the format then. This is how they're going to win it, if they are to win it. It's played over two legs. The first console is decided by a coin flip, which we will show you in a moment. And in the case of a draw, an extra time if penalties is needed, it will go that way. Uh, let's have a little look at which way the uh, coin toss went. We did it earlier on. And you can see the two boys lining up against each other, coin being flipped. And it landed PlayStation up, which means that console will go first. Who has the advantage there, Spencer? Well, I believe it's better to go second. And the, part, the reason for that is, one, you get to obviously get the less comfortable console out of the way first. But secondly, and most importantly, is if the uh, second leg goes to extra time or penalties, it's played on the console you've just finished the second leg on. In this case, it would be Xbox, which means if it was that tight that it goes to extra time, Dasari gets more time on his favoured console. It's an interesting one, isn't it, to, to do it on a coin toss, but there is only one way really of deciding that. In terms of what we've seen in the past, has it gone that way in terms of the advantage with the console going second? In general, I mean, it's, it's different every year, of course, and, and this year um, icons are available on both sides as well, so it means that the teams are often identical across consoles, where in the past that's not always been the case. Uh, traditionally, Xbox have kind of dominated the cross-console finals, with a few exceptions, but I think it's a, it's a new, you know, new year, anything can happen. Yeah. All right, so we've said it a number of times, 20 million people entered this competition. Let's find out how we got our final 32.
may have it if you needed any reassurance of how much it meant to each and every one of those players. They went through each stage here, had a little look at this, Spencer. Like we said, started with 20 million, and then they went through stage one, the part of the players. Tell us about that. Yeah, so many different ways to get here. Um, starting off, obviously, with the weekend league on, on FIFA 18 Ultimate Team. We've had the Champions Cups in both uh, Manchester and Barcelona. We've had the E-Club World Cup in, in Paris. We've had lots of different leagues, uh, such as the EMLS, the E-Bundesliga, E-League R. Lots of those opportunities for guys to get through. But after those, you went through to Amsterdam. That was the playoffs for Xbox and PlayStation. And they were the only way you could get here to the O2 Arena in London. And we whittled down 64 players on each console to just uh, 32 mm -hmm. that came through for the grand final. And then the past few days, obviously, we whittled those down to the final two. In terms of how you went to this competition, anyone can do it, can't they? 100%. I mean, that's the great thing. This is a, this is a huge prize, a huge kind of place to, to get to play in front of people watching online and in person here, and obviously $250,000 up for grabs. Uh, Marcuso, who was so close to getting to the final, is a great example because he only qualified for Amsterdam through the last chance qualifier, which was weekend league. So even though we'd seen him at other events in the past, he'd just missed out. So theoretically, someone sitting at home who hadn't had a massive year in competitive FIFA, they peaked at the right time, qualified online. Pretty soon after that, they could have found themselves in this position. And this position means that if you win it, you get this. Uh, we've been looking at it for the past few days. We couldn't take our eyes off it. It's so beautiful, isn't it? It is. It's a brand new trophy. It, it reminds me in many ways of the traditional Football World Cup. You know, you've got the, the globe sitting at the top here, but it's got a modern twist on it, as is the sort of esports way. So, yeah, whoever gets this is going to be absolutely very happy. So it's, it's a wonderful piece. It is, isn't it? And their name will be engraved on that very trophy indeed. So um, if you think it looks like it was crafted by the gods, it wasn't quite, but here's a little look at how exactly it was made. There you have it, doesn't look too bad, does it? Not only that, you will win the trophy if you win this, but also a prize pool of $400,000 split between all the players down to the round of 16. The winner will take away $250,000. Spencer, that is a huge increase in the last couple of years. It is, just two years ago in New York, we were both there, the winner got $20,000. That's 12 and a half times, I believe, if my math serves me correct. Uh, it's increased. And not only that, 50000 obviously for the runner-up. So, yeah, they can't complain about the prize money, that's for sure. It's a life-changing amount. And the question for me is, can people stay hungry after they win something that big? Will we see a winner come back next year? Because we've seen some guys get close, previous winners, but neither of them are in the hot seat now. Well, Gorilla came back, made it all the way through, didn't quite make it to this stage. But we spoke to him about what he spent his money on last year. It was 200000 And he said he banked it all, which is actually quite a, a smart way of doing it. Well, yeah, I mean, these guys are, that's the other thing to talk about. These guys are often quite young, you know, some of them still teenagers. And if you get that amount of money in your back pocket, the smartest thing to do is probably, you know, look, look after it for a little bit. The way that the prize money keeps going up, it, it can only be good news for a competition, can't it, in terms of increasing the quality? Well, I think it just shows the trajectory that FIFA Esports is on, you know. It's just been getting bigger and better every year, not just the prize money that the place, you know, we're actually playing these tournaments in. They're improving all the time. This, this is an unbelievable setting in, in an iconic venue, like you say, the O2 Arena. The players are getting better, that they're playing at more regular intervals, playing in more tournaments, being able to cope with this sort of pressure. So it's just getting more professional, which is great to see. And it doesn't necessarily mean, does it, because we spoke about this before, about players going the distance in competitions like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will go on to do it again, because they're so used to this kind of environment now. Well, I just think the margins are so small. Once you get in a room like this with 32 of the best players in the world, anything can change. We've seen examples of the first day, Megabit won all of his games, looked unbeatable. Second day, he came, looked a completely different player and it wasn't long after that he was knocked out of the tournament so yeah it's been able to keep that consistency across days across tournaments that's proving quite tough all right cool let's catch up with Chuboy then because he is with Dito thank you Laura now Dito I know that you're a pro player for Manchester City Esports and you're no uh, you're not uh, you're very familiar with the stage because you were here last year 2017 uh, unfortunately a runner-up to a gorilla uh, how does it feel to be on a stage like this and do you have any advice for the players who are on the stage right now now, personally, I can say that for me it was always a great experience and I had the feeling that this is what I got for working the whole year so hard. Um, if you could them an advice, I know it's hard, but I can say enjoy the game. This is what you worked so hard for. Play your A game and try to win. That's it. And I know that your teammate Marcuso, he unfortunately lost that semi-final. And 
What would you say to him in order to bounce back next year uh, from a semifinal, a crucial semifinal like that? I mean, it it was a really close game, and he could also have won the game. Um, I would say just just learn from this experience, try to get better next year, and I'm sure he will have a great future for sure. Now, Danny, you are a pro player for IX Esports, and I know Stefano Pina plays in the same league as you, the E to BZ. I mean, uh, tell me what you know about Stefano. Um, I know he's um, he's a new player. Um, I mean, this is the first year he's. Um, he's playing really good, uh, like top four, top eight, and now in the final here. So he's a great player, uh, he plays on ball possession, tries to keep calm and uh, make the opponent crazy. Now, he made an amazing comeback. Uh, he was 2-0 down and he eventually came back to win the match. I mean, what does it take to come back from 2-0 down when you're playing with so much pressure as a FIFA eSports pro that plays for a club? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of pressure, uh, even if you were not playing for your club and standing on a big stage like this, there's so much pressure for yourself, winning the big trophy, winning some big prize money, but playing for a football club, fans watching you, family supporting you, um, yeah, you feel a lot of pressure extra for that. Now I'm going to ask the two of you, you know, no pressure, who do you think will win this final? Ito. Personally, I would go for the side because he has this little advantage of his used to playing both consoles and this can make a huge difference. Will his experience being on a stage like this in Manchester help him? Of course it helps a lot because you get used to situations, you know what to do and this could also help during the game for sure. Now what is it about the side that makes him so difficult to play against? I, have pl I haven't played against him because on Xbox side but for now, okay, uh, what can I see from him is like his attacking side is amazing, you never know what he's doing and uh, this makes him like shooting so many goals. Now, Danny, I'll take it over to you. Will you go for Dasari or Stefano Pina in this final? Um, as I know this year how good Stefano Pina is, I think um, if he plays on top level, he makes a good chance to win this. But at the end, I choose for Dasari. So, guys, an exciting grand final coming up. You don't want to miss any of this action. The grand final is coming up All right now. Let's go back to the guys on the stage. Chewy Boy, thank you very much. Not only do they win this trophy, $250,000, but they also get an invite to the FIFA Best Awards. Cristiano Ronaldo. And what a prize that will be. Spencer, you went there last year. You managed to rub shoulders with a few of those stars. What was it like? It was great, but let me tell you, the, the, the gorilla who won last year who got to go, he doesn't just sit like at the back. He sits literally in the same row, a couple of seats away from the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. So this is the sort of thing that one of these guys can look forward to. It's a great event. These different prizes mean different things to different people, but how important is just the title of world champion without all these prizes? You know, I think it's, it's really important because there's so many different tournaments now. This is clearly the most prestigious. It's the top of the ladder. And some of these guys, okay, Dasari has actually won an event this year. But often you get people who get to the final peaking later in the year who maybe haven't won things previously. And this is all that really matters. doesn't matter what happens the rest, the rest of the year. If you win this bad boy, you're the world champ. Simple as that. Yeah. You look around and see the crowd. It's, it's so full up now. How will these players be feeling? Tassari is probably more experienced in, in this instance, you know. Again, would he have played in front of a crowd like this? Maybe not. He's already won more money than he's ever won before in, in the, the guaranteed $50,000 they've got as a Stefano. So, yeah, at this point, pressure could be getting to them. I don't know. Tassari got a little bit more experience, though. All right, we'll soon find out. Time for a quick break, but when we come back, we will get into the grand final of the FIFA E World Cup. We'll see you in two minutes.
Hello, welcome back to the FIFA E World Cup. It is grand final time. We've seen some brilliant action over the last three days, and it all culminates now. We will have our champion in a matter of two games. Spencer FC is alongside me. So far, Spencer, what we've seen in terms of the 32 that made it here to the O2 are some great characters, haven't we? That's what I've enjoyed watching, as well as incredible play. Just talking about these guys as individuals. Yeah, we've seen a range of emotions, haven't we? We've seen some highly kind of emotive guys who get up out of the sea every time they score a goal and sort of throw their hands up in despair every time they concede. We've seen other people like, for example, Nicholas, who's called the Iceman, who doesn't look like he changes whether he's scored or he's conceded. But yeah, I mean, it's great to see Emma Stasari in this instance. You don't get a lot out of him emotion-wise, but when he wins, you see a little bit of joy. He had a bit of a celebration earlier when he uh, secured his spot in the final. And Stefano Pina, again, is quite a uh, sort of relaxed customer yeah. and quite new to the scene as well. So you have to say right now he's taking this, uh, this sort of pressure tremendously well. Yeah, let's look at them in a little bit more detail. Them backed up with a few stats and who they've beaten, things like that. Let's have a look at this, uh, look at this Spencer. Emma Sassari, quite solid. He's quite a uh, possession player, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's only dropped that one game in the group. I think I'm right in saying that was to Gorilla. Um, but he's been pretty solid throughout the year. You probably have to say he's been the most consistent player now throughout the whole year of FIFA 18. Defensively, very difficult to break through as well. Difficult to break down. And uh, as Dito and um, Danny were saying a minute ago, very strong offensively as well. So it, you don't get it. feels like he's got 12 players sometimes on the pitch. <laughs> Just watching him in the last game against Kurt, it was unbelievable. His opponent is Stefano Pina. Let's have a little look at his stats and who he's beaten so far to get here. He's unbeaten in the whole competition. That's very impressive. Yeah, it's amazing to get this far. Um, he has had some tight games. Obviously, he had the two draws and extra time he needed to get through against Man City's Marcuso. But he has got here with a lesser goal difference uh, than what Mr. Sari had, just plus 10, which maybe you'd expect to see more of having got this far into the tournament. So it shows he's not destroying opponents necessarily, but he's getting the job done. Right. Each finalist has played 20 games over the course of the past three days. And we have two left now. 20 games, I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of how long they've sat at these consoles, it is a lot. It is, yeah. And obviously, you've got the, the two-legged uh, feature we added this year in all, in all games, which I do think makes it more fair. It means you can recover from a perhaps dodgy first leg if it hasn't gone your way. But it does put you through a range of emotions and the more breaks in between games and all these kinds of time to overthink things and whatnot. So it's been an emotional roller coaster just watching them, let alone for the players. Yeah, and it's not going to end yet because we're going to meet our two players now. And now, introducing our first finalist, coming all the way from Saudi Arabia, it's the Xbox champion, the beast from the Middle East, M.S. Dasari! Right, before they play, we're gonna have a chat to each player. I hope you're not trying to get into game mode just yet. Uh, just talk us through the, the journey that you've taken so far in this competition. I played in the group of death, really. There was top three, top four player, I guess. And I was uh, the first in this group, and that gives me a lot of confidence, you know? And I'm glad that I make it all of the way to be the ex was champion. You're known for keeping hold of the ball and being quite solid defensively. We were just discussing it. Are you going to change anything about this game? Uh, you know, it's FIFA, so you can't say that. You've got your family, haven't you? We met a few of them earlier on. You've got your parents watching at home and your brothers and sisters in the crowd. How much does that mean to you? It really means a lot, and I hope to give them the trophy as a gift. Good luck, MS Sorry. Hope you have a good game. Let's meet your opponent. And his opponent, the PlayStation champion, the Belgian Red Devil from PSV Esports, it's Stefano Pina! Hey, let's have a word with Stefano before you sit down, mate. Congratulations for getting this far. My first question for you is, Everyone seems to say Tassari maybe is the favourite for this one, but they've been saying that about your tournament. You keep beating people. How do you feel perhaps going in as an underdog? Um, I like to be the underdog, so um, yeah, I'm cool with it. 
Okay, so confidence deal. Talk to me about Belgium, because uh, no Belgian's ever won the uh, FIFA World Championship before. Belgium have never won a, a real-life World Cup either. How does it feel to be representing your country? I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm just saying the facts. How does it feel? How does it feel to be representing your country at this stage? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, got uh, support from uh, Belgium, so uh, yeah, I gave it all. Okay, best of luck to you, sir. Take a seat. The final is nearly upon us. Let's go. All right, this is it, the FIFA E-World Cup Grand Final across two legs, kicking off with the PlayStation 4. Let's get straight into it and hand you over to our commentary team. Thank you very much. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have a brand new FIFA E-World Champion with the new trophy, Joe. It is Saudi Arabia, an experienced Saudi Arabian in uh, Mossad al Dasari up against Stefano Pina, the Belgian. It's, if you were to look at stats, you would say Aldasari, he's got this. But Pina is unbeaten all tournament. Yeah, and the fact that he's never been in a position like this, he doesn't have that experience. Uh, funnily enough, it seems to have worked in his favor almost because he never expected to get this far on his own admission. And he said that, you know, I don't have any pressure on me right now. And I think playing without that pressure is something that can see him go a long, long way in this game. Of course, Emma Stasari is a formidable opponent, which is definitely going to be an issue for him. Of course, we are playing one leg on Xbox, one leg on PlayStation here, with, of course, the PlayStation coming up first. And we know that Emma Stasari has a wealth of experience mm. on PlayStation as well. So you'd have to say that Stefano has to have a big result in this first game. So both these teams are setting up fairly similar. De Gea and goal, Marcelo, Ramos, Ferdinand and Walker, exactly the same defence. All playing 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. There is a difference in midfield, both playing Hullet, but there is Pogba, 94 Pogba for Dasari favours that one, whereas it's Vieira for Pina. Up front, of course, you've got Messi on one side for Dasari, Neymar on the other for Pina, both using Henri, R9 and CR7. Of course, this is the FIFA Ultimate Team Mode. They are the teams, and of course, we'll see how it plays out. There is a big advantage, as you mentioned, but it is Stefano Pina on the first attack. Thought there was going to be a foul whistled in there. We can see in the top right there, Mr. Sorry calling for an early pause here. So maybe wanting to change a couple of things within his settings. But it was Pina right from the kickoff who got right up to Emma Sassari's box, but no further on than that one. And of course, you see both of these players had slightly different grip that they have on each of these controllers. Everyone has their own style. Yeah, the claw grips is uh, one of the common that is used. Obviously needing to use both L1 and L2, R1, L2, R2, etc., etc. Uh, I can tell you coming into this game, there was a practice match I witnessed backstage. Uh, Dasari was, you know, had a, he found a poor training partner, really, in all honesty. Nicholas, he's done a few things this year. Um, I can tell you, Dasari won that game, but it could be Pina who will break the start. Goal, it's going to go for a corner to Stefano Pina, but it's Dasari making a couple of changes. Yeah, and it's going to be camera settings for him, by the looks of things. Just uh, making, making it good sure for us, that... really. Huh? Making it better for us. Absolutely. Let's make it sure that uh, he's as comfortable as possible here on technically what is his away console on the PlayStation. We'll see how much that shows through in his game. Of course, it is a corner here for Stefano Pina. Looks like he's going to float this one straight in front post. Is the usual target this time. It's the defender that gets there first, though. So. Will Dasari get the ball out of his own box? He will do. Start his own attack. Try and build it. He's scored 70 goals throughout this tournament. Incredible stats, really. Stefano Pina, just the 54, but obviously it's what you do with them. It's all well and good smashing someone, but really you're only going to get three points or victory from the win, no matter how many you score. That in. So, Dasari represented Saudi Arabia in the green as he pushes forward. Pogba through to Ronaldo. Gets a chance, but it's blocked out. It's going to be actually tell height, wasn't it? It was just an awful shot, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> just going out for the goal kick there. And you're talking about goals. Um, MS Dasari, first quarter, five, uh, sorry, round of 16 game, 5 1 in one that. 9 4 and 8 3. This is not a guy that 
skims by with but a one or two yeah. goal uh, <laughs> advantage. This is a guy who puts a lot of goals in and defends incredibly well as well. Absolutely. And of course, going through second in his group. Shot blocked out once again by Ramos, whereas Dasari topped out his group. Dasari on the attack once again. Quickly won back though, CR7, Pina getting involved and has had the lion's share of possession so far, something he didn't have in his semi-final against Marcuso, very much one way for that, but this is going to be a chance. Oh, big save from De Gea, deflects off for a corner. Yeah, taken short here, almost instantly from Stefano Pina, no real options going forward. Oh, that's a dangerous ball oh, though. No. no offside, Ronaldo was still in his own half. He's a 1v1 with the keeper. De Gea's come out and he's got it. Can you believe it? A golden opportunity for MS Tassari to take the lead. I am absolutely gobsmacked first of the mistake and the through ball and you get a one-on-one -on -one like that it's, it's a done deal that at this level the amount of goals they've scored in those high pressure situations you just feel and that you know what mentally that may actually affect the sorry peter of course can be thinking i i got away with this he's got to yep. be taking that and thinking right that was the risk that was the mistake i've got that out of my system 28 minutes gone time to get scoring i'm on my home console he's not you know, not an experienced Xbox player, hasn't used the controller much. It's just going to be a default controller for him. We'll be a little stiff to start with. He's going to get a chance and he needs to start scoring goals here on the PlayStation. Can't, still can't believe that MS Tassari didn't take that chance. Keeper brought right out, and legs to it first. Already 30 minutes gone in this one. Goal is so far. Here is Ronaldo, both Cristiano. And the Brazilian Ronaldo linking up at the front. Couldn't quite do what they wanted to with it there, though. And now it's MS Dasari back with things. In theory, a draw, a nil-nil even, would probably be fine for him coming off the PlayStation and then onto his home console. And I think that um, Spencer made a really important point that if we do go into extra time and penalties, that will be played, obviously, on the second console. So MS Desari, technically, if he goes that far, should have a little bit of an advantage there as well. Yeah, and he has been fairly unstoppable on the Xbox. Did get beaten at once in the group. There's a chance. This time he will take it. And Masada Desari will go one it up against the Bono Pino on the PlayStation. Well, already missing one. One-on-one -on -one chance with the goalkeeper. Not going to make that mistake a second time. And he is 1-0 up. You can see the prize money, $400,000 in total. A staggering quarter of a million dollars goes to the winner of this game. And so far, it's MS Dasari that has stamped his mark on it, picking up that first goal. Stefano, home console, has to go in at least level, you feel. Well, when you look at the semi-final, you saw Stefano Pina had to come back from 2-0 down in that matchup. Did manage to get by hook or by crook, a missed penalty, a crossbar hit, a last-minute goal save. There were so many chances that just didn't go in his favour. This time it's, though, Dasari once again. Didn't have the support he needed in the box. Couldn't lay that ball across, and Pina gets back on the possession, has to... Try and get something as half time approaches. Neymar gonna lose the ball out here. Two minutes extra time in the first half, Joe. I've seen Pina obviously playing uh, his back line a little bit further forward. I'm assuming that's gonna settle back a little bit now after that earlier scare. There is Pogba for MS Tassari. Ronaldo now on the edge. Managed to turn on the left here though. Manages to get down in time. And shove it wide. It's the corner again for MS Dasari. Scored a few of these, didn't he? In the semi-finals, quick inside post flick on. He's going to try it again. De Gea gets a big paw to it, and it's cleared. Not out of danger just yet, though. Marcelo now moving forward. There is Pogba, tries the ball on through. Got a lucky deflection. There's Ronaldo again on the inside of the box, but it was Ramos who got that, and as he moves away, half-time going to be whistled in. And it is 1-0. There are the statistics. Two shots for MS Dasari, two on target, of course, one of them going in. 
three shots with all three on target for Pino, but no goal, and that's a very similar scenario to his semi-final where he had more chances and just couldn't find the back of the net. Yeah, and if you were to look at the clear-cut chances, obviously you'd have to look at the Sari. Had that big through ball. Let's have a look at the highlights. It started off, Pina really put a lot of pressure down early on. Quick deflection, Marcelo throwing himself in front of it there to prevent the early goal. You can see Pina, he knows what it means. He missed chances in that semi-final and got away with it. This time, big save from De Gea, could have deflected. We've seen them going in the goal. But here, look at this, a mega, mega chance for De Sari early on, but De Gea flying out of the box. And that could have easily made it 2-0. That would have been a disastrous start for him. As it happened, though, of course, there was another one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. This time, he made no mistake about it. And that brings MS De Sari 1-0 at half-time in the lead. 45 minutes to go on his away console. If he can hold on to this, what a fantastic start that would be. Well, Stefano and Masad Aldasari both have coaches, friends, supports, everybody that just offers them just calm the nerves down, just keep them focused. If you look at the stats, Pina had more shots. We talked about this in the game against Marcuso, and he just has to do the same. It's working, you just need to squeeze that goal in. Just the final last shot. He has the chances. Let's see if he can make the difference. Now, of course, it's Emma Tassari to kick off in the second half. Playing things slow. Pina been behind a good few times. That hasn't seemed to have phased him before. But will the added pressure of the crowd here, the trophy just in vision on his left-hand side, that could make it all the more difficult. He was pushed to extra time in the semi-finals with Marcuso. Had to go the distance, it was the 112th minute that goal went in. This time, though, he's got to get the business done on the PlayStation, but it is MS Dasari that will score once again in the second half. A big old header coming out from R9. The double Ronaldo duo celebrating. And it's a header just floats past De Gea into the net. Yeah, 52 minutes in, that was uh, a whole seven minutes of possession in game from MS Dasari from the kickoff. Played it patiently. Managed to get himself into a crossing position. Of course, the header to slot it home. And now Stefano Pina. He's got That's to get a going. job to do. He he's has got, got to get, going, to get going. 55 minutes in. He's had the chances, but finds himself goalless, 2-0 behind. We have had in the in the history of obviously these cross console finals that have been happening for the last two years some some really big turnarounds uh, as the opposing player will go on to his uh, opposing console you know something that he hasn't usually played and then go on and score massive amounts you know Marcuse in the Club World Championships last year for Bromby did just that there's been moments so let's not write him off just yet because there's a long way to go in this game we're only at the 60 minute mark of the very first matchup. There's a full 90 minutes to be played out on the Xbox, but we really could do with a bit of a lifeline, you feel, here on the PlayStation to give himself just that early goal, something to work in. Give him that little bit of belief, if anything, Joe. So far, he's just not having a lot of possession. There's a great ball on through. Pompa and Ronaldo to link up, he's going to take the shot. Defender sliding in, got in the way of it, though. And now for Stefano Pina. Feel needs to have some time of his own with the ball, settle any nerves, and build up to a chance. There is Henri. That's Vieira and Hollett. His partnership in the middle of the park. Finding it difficult to actually get in there. There he finally does get it through. Oh, R9 almost made it through for the turn. Sergio Ramos, though, as per usual, there to annoy. A good sign, though, for Stefano Pina getting some good, clean passing around. That's how he managed to get himself back into it against Marcuso. Started to just get a control of the game, get a little bit of that possession back, 
just keep the passing going until you can work the openings. And it was very close there. That was just a last-ditch last ditch tackle that stopped it. He's got to make sure he can keep his back line clear. Kyle Walker steps in. Henri back over to him. We saw a lot of this. A lot of the switch of play. Left to right. Switch the wings. Stretch the game. Work your magic and just pull the players towards you and create those openings in the middle. That's exactly what Stefano Pina is going for here. Man up on the top side, had a bit of space there. Pina has already queued a pause for the next time the ball goes out of play. That may well be not for a little while. Not had a big chance here in quite a few minutes. Cross Pina just losing that ball once again. He's the one chasing. No pressure on Dasari to really be pushing. Yeah, he's building up the possession of his own here. Probably expect to see something like Mbappe coming on. A couple of changes, maybe. Uh, just don't think he's got Messi on the pitch either yet. But, uh, Stefano Pina, so maybe have him come on. Oh, that's a mistake from Aldasari. 12 minutes to go in this game in regulation time, along with a, just a few minutes of extra time. Marcelo looking to maybe pump it down the wing. He's being pressured all the way back to his own half here. As big Rio Ferdinand pulls it up to Hollin. Pull it on Hollin. Oh, and he's lost out. Saudi Arabian, Mal Masari, just getting himself back into this one. And if he could steal another goal and make it 3 0, going over to the Xbox, it would be so, so much work for Stefano Pina to do. Playing the possession game at the moment, though. As he will actually uh, get that one brought back for advantage. And finally, finally. Stefano Pina. 20 minutes later. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he uh, <laughs> called in for that one at 65 minutes or so. So it's there we go. Messi on. minutes on the clock when it goes for, through. Actually, Hazard on for Messi and Neymar coming on for Emma's Dasari. Meanwhile, Son and Mbappe and Messi yep. all coming on. For Stefano Pina, so big attacking changes. Stay in the tactic 4 2 2 2. Both players holding the same shape. A goal has to come for Stefano Pina. Going 2 0 down onto Dasari's home console. One that you're not as accomplished as your opponent at is a difficult position to be in. Quarter of a million dollars on the line trophy the first name to be engraved on it as well there's something special about that in its own big support there for Masad Aldasari his family sat waiting by his brother there who was behind him when he won back in Whistler in 2017 as well obviously very accomplished player in FIFA and only a teenager still Joe it's uh, it's scary really to think of but both these players both very young well, FIFA has a wide spectrum of uh, ages of players, obviously Dito being uh, the oldest here. So far, champion way back in it was 2006. That makes me feel a little more, more lively. <laughs> <laughs> it is Aldasari now with the ball and six minutes remaining in regulation time. Trying to push forward. Can he pick up a third goal here? That looks like offside. it's just offside. It is. It's going to give the ball to Stefano Pina. He's got five minutes to do something with it. Well, the build-up has taken so, so long in this game for both players, honestly. Not very direct. Oh, my word. That's two of them down there. Down. Advantage was given. But you can see being pressured even at the back, making it more difficult for Stefano Pina to get in. Finally, a run for Mbappe, maybe. No, I think he's even walked that out himself. Possession away to MS Dasari. Big ball down the line for That's him as well. Ball. In towards Ronaldo. He's got Holly on him. And he will just put that back. Stays in as well. So MS Dasari playing over distance. There's a lot of space on that top side. Two minutes added on. And that means that this one is either a goal for MS Dasari in the dying moments or it ends at 2 0. It's Holly to take the shot. Into the air, who will throw it out there. And there is the final whistle here on the PlayStation. MS Dasari will lead 2 0. Dominant stuff. We know he's an accomplished player on both Xbox and PlayStation. MS Dasari, he played 
and cross consoles a number of times as well. The experience paying in the first leg here, but it's not over. The Xbox console match will be coming up. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from that game, of course. Two goals to zero is the lead for Masad al Dasari here representing Saudi Arabia and going rogue. Well, that was the first chance that came in early. Bit of an annoyance for Stefano Pina. Then he had the second one, of course, which again was just tipped wide by the air. I think there were three shots. This one, though, was the interesting one, of course. Completely mm. free, one on one with the keeper. Slides it out there. Really should have scored. This level of game, you'll not often see those opportunities squandered, but he made it up for it. With Ronaldo coming on through and taking the lead. It was a strong start. We saw a number of chances. He only actually had the two shots in that opening game as well, the first half. And then, of course, it switched back into the second half, and it was Aldasari once again with a flick up and a header. Henri's cross, I think it took a, a kind flick off a defender's leg there just to put it higher in the air for Ronaldo to head it past the keeper. And that, of course, put it at two goals to nil. And that's where we stood at the end of the game with Masan Aldasari leading as he moves into his home console on the Xbox against Stefano Pina from Belgium and PSV Eindhoven. Yeah, after that 2-0, honestly, the, the only real highlights were the percentage, uh, the passing numbers, if you like, because it was pure percentage play. And honestly, MS Asari looking commanding, but guess what? We still have the Xbox. We'll see if Stefano can turn it around. Thank you, boys. Spencer, not a bad way to start, really, for MS Dasari doing it on his non-preferred console. Yeah, perfect start for him. We said this was always a chance, though. He's, he's so comfortable on both consoles, and a uh, big challenge ahead for Stefano Pina now. We've seen it the last couple of years, actually, that, that players don't always win when they win on the opposite console. We saw it last year with Spencer. Yeah, I mean, it can happen for sure, and that's why we have the two legs, and in this case, you know, you need to be able to perform across both consoles. There is a chance for a comeback from Stefano, but against a, a player of uh, Dasari's calibre, it's going to be tough. What did you make of that performance for the, for the first leg? Strong, strong from Emma Tassari. You know, it doesn't really feel, I wouldn't even say it's an away console for him. You know, he's actually played tournaments on the PlayStation before. It's not just like he can do it if he needs to. He sometimes chooses to. So he's very comfortable on it. And he had that chance to go 1-0 up early on, which he missed. Could have been more, right? Yeah, we can see it now. Have a little look at this. You don't expect Ronaldo to miss in these circumstances, do you? Yeah, it's a very high defensive line from Stefano there, which almost worked against him. It's just a slightly heavy touch from Ronaldo going through there, which allowed De Gea the time to come out and, and get the ball and stop an early goal. Stefano Pina is still with a chance, like we say. What will he be thinking now, going into this final on the opposite console? Yeah, I mean, an early goal for him would, would be fantastic just to get himself back in the mix because uh, Emma Tassari is great at sort of seeing games out. You saw the difference between the first and the second leg in his game against Kurt. You know, Kurt went 1-0 up and 2-1 up in the first semi-final. But when Tassari went into that second leg with a lead, he was just so good at keeping it and it looked like a completely different match. So um, Stefano needs to be quick. Is this where the coaches come into play, the importance of having somebody over your shoulder just to help talk you through things? Potentially, yeah. Potentially if he wants to make some changes maybe change formation I don't know if he's going to do that because whatever he's done so far in this tournament has served him so well Stefano he's been unbeaten this is quite unfamiliar territory for him and if you were Mr. Sari's coach he's chatting there we can't hear what you're saying what would he be saying it's his cousin as well right he's probably thinking about what he's going to do with $250,000 <laughs> no he hasn't won it yet he hasn't won it yet but they're planning I think because he looks so comfortable and also Sari, I don't think he needs to change anything for, even with the 4 triple 2 formation which he was using, he kept with that formation when he went ahead, which shows that he was comfortable, he didn't feel like he needed to go super defensive. So if you see another performance like that, he's got one hand on the trophy. All right, time for a quick break. When we come back, the second leg of the grand final.
Welcome back to the FIFA E World Cup. We're at the grand final stage. We've had the first leg of the final, and you can see there that is the goal that Ms. Desari made to make it 2 0. Not even on the console that he prefers to play on, on the PS4. We're switching over to the Xbox next. Stefano Pino with it all to do. Frustrating start to the proceedings for him. But Spencer received alongside me to discuss. It can be done, can't it, Spencer? Definitely. We've seen some huge comebacks over the years, much bigger than 2 0. So uh, Stefano shouldn't feel that he's counted out yet. Big task ahead, though, probably one of the hardest people to play against in terms of uh, holding on to a lead. Mm, look at this crowd, Spencer. I keep having a little look around because this is the O2 Arena. If you need to have any indication of how much esports has grown over the past few years, you just need to look at this. Yeah, I mean, I've been lucky to be involved in FIFA esports for four or five years now. And when I started, I think the first event I did, I was um, commentating basically from a kind of studio room it was tiny and, and there were some great players there some players that are still in this tournament now shows how long they've been sticking it out and over the years it's absolutely grown so much to be i mean in the o2 arena where can we go from here where are we going to be next year i don't know <laughs> let's hand over to choose with a couple of players thank you guys i'm with gold machine from canada and also honey badger from new zealand now gold machine you're in the xbox side of things and you played against dasari uh tell me how that match went well, the first leg ended 3-1, and he had a two-goal lead on me just like in the first leg in the finals. And second leg, he closed up pretty well. I won 1-0, but I, was, I still lost 3-2 in the end. So. Now we've seen Desari. I think he's very impressive. I think it's probably his defensive style uh, is what seems to win him games. I mean, what is it about it that is so different from any other pro? When he's defending, he never jumps in. He's patient. He waits till you show him the ball, and then he just comes in and takes from you. So that's all I got to say. How do you beat MS Desari? I mean, in my opinion, you just got to get a few lucky bounces or you just got to find a way around his game because it's, it's not easy. All right. Now, Honey Badger, you did play against Stefano Pina. You drew 5-5 in your matchup. I mean, tell me about the way his play style affected you. Uh, yeah, he's very tricky around the edge of the box. We had some uh, back and forth game the whole way. Uh, scored like a late bicycle kick with Suarez, but he's a hell of a player, so uh, hopefully he can show off on his away console. No, I think he's playing 4 triple 2 and it's something that he's been using through the entire uh, tournament, and uh, he's mimicking what Desari's doing. Desari's also playing 4 triple 2 as well. Uh, what can he do in the second leg to change things and turn this tie around? I think he was just a little bit struggling with Desari's high pressure. I think if he gets the ball to the edge of the box, he'll do some damage, but at the moment, he just needs to get through that first five seconds of high press, and when he gets to the edge of the box, he should be able to create some goals. Now, it looks like Pina is more of a, I guess, possession-style player. Is that something he's got to change? What kind of custom tactics would you change if you were on the stage there? Uh, so as pressure and aggression might come up, you'll probably see it towards the later of the game. He'll probably start off with the way he's been playing because obviously he's been scoring goals. So later in the, uh, the second leg, he'll up that and uh, try to put Desari under a lot of pressure. All right. I will say, um, well, you think Desari's going to win? Uh, PlayStation, I hope, wins. But uh, I think Desari on his home console will be quite a hard task. Gold Machine, what about you? I think Desari is going to win. He's a great friend of mine. I wish him the best of luck. So. All right. So it looks like Desari is in the lead, and these guys think that he might carry that to victory and take home the $250,000. But let's send it back to Laura, who's on the stage. Chew Boy, thank you very much. This is it, the second leg of the grand final. MS Desari with 2-0 lead. Stefano Pino with it all to do. Let's hand over to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Laura. Here we go, then. We're back. For the second leg, the first one did end two goals to nil. We were watching it from the side and thinking, it hasn't really started well here, has he? On his supposed home console, I'm not too sure what you read into this whole home and away console. I don't think Desari has a home and away console. I heard that he was playing more PS4 coming into the tournament than he was Xbox One. So maybe he knew all along that this was his fate, that uh, it was written in the stars for Desari to be walking away from London with half, with a quarter, I should say of a million dollars in his bank account. But here we go, second leg on the Xbox One. And two goals needed for Stefano Pinna on his away console. See if you look back to the FIFA Club World Cup, the side he on PlayStation there when he was teamed up with the Royal. That is old team, in fact, before he did mean to a uh, team row. This is the second leg. And as uh, Chu said, both players playing that four triple two. That literally only changes between the two sides is Desari's using Pogba, the 94 Festival of Football, and Lionel Messi, team of the year, in his team. Stefano Pina, Vieira, and Neymar in those positions. Everything else identical between the two players. On paper, you would say that MS Desari 
Yes, he's on his home console. He's played even better today, what we see from champions usually. As the tournament goes throughout, they get better and better as we go game by game through the knockout stages. But there's no reason why Stefano cannot go and get a result or at least get himself back in this game. Well, he has to high press from the start. He has to get a goal back. If he gets a goal back early, we've got a real good final on his hands. If Desari can get one, two goals and really put this game out of Pina's reach, can't see any way back on his away console as well. I'm not sure how much experience he has on the Xbox One. Well, it could have been three or four last game, that chance so early on when Emma Stasai found himself in so much space. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, Brad David De Gea. Just about survived that one, this Stefano Pinner. As Emma Stasari comes forward again, tried to feed that one to Paul Pogba. And unfortunately for him, it will fall back to David De Gea. Yeah, lovely little interchange from Desari, looking to get Pogba in behind. Runs all the way through to David De Gea, and he's going to play out from the back. As you see, a lot of players do. They don't like to waste the ball. They don't like to pump it long and have the opportunity to lose the header. This could be interesting. R9 Ronaldo, killer ball through to Neymar. Just pushed off it. Offside, no, offside anyway. anyway. But I think coming throughout this tournament, a lot of people have said this about Stefano, you know, on paper. Not one of the favourites that came into the competition, but still, one of the best 32 players in the world. Again, people could be doubting him right now on this away console, thinking maybe he can't do it, maybe, you know, it's not possible. He's proved enough people wrong. Yeah, people are doubting him from the start of the competition. Probably a lot of people didn't actually think he'd get out of the groups. He made it to the quarterfinals in Amsterdam, and here he is in the grand final. Even said he's... Look at the controls there. You can see the grip that Desari's got very comfortable. Pina looks a little bit foreign to that Xbox One controller. And we always see MS Desari, whether this is in, of course, the grand final now, but before, he always has a good first leg. It's important to him to score a few goals. I think he was looking at some stats come into it. Scores three goals a game. That's his average. Three goals a game. But he does concede a few as well. Yeah, he does. I think the, the Kurt game in particular, when he took that 5-3 lead into the second leg, that was massive for him. It, mean, it meant that in the second leg he could play this same sort of style right now. Keep the ball, keep possession. And if Desari can hold on to this, he'll be... $250,000 richer, and the first name on that FIFA E World Cup, new trophy designed for this year. The best player out of 20 million from all around the world. Put threaded through ball down the line, decides to play into feet instead. Not rushing anything at the minute, Pina. Seeming quite confident though as he comes forward with Cristiano Ronaldo. And a really good defender. One thing I'm noticing from Emma Stasari is. He's changed his play style a little bit. Happy to maybe sit a little bit deeper, keep the ball in the right areas. Yeah, he knows that he's got he's got two goals he's in front. A carbon copy of the, the Kurt game really just kept the ball for in that second leg for the majority of the match. He had a two-goal crushing going into that game as well. Omri. Cristiano Ronaldo on the it's bench. A chance. Omri again! That's 3-0. And MS Desari is even closer to becoming a world champion in London. Thierry Henry, fantastic, low driven across the goalkeeper into that, playing that right attacking mid spot, it means he doesn't have to cut inside, he can just shoot straight across the goalkeeper. Probably the best way to score this year, when you are one-on-one -on, -one on an angle, if you shoot and the keeper saves it, nine times out of ten you're going to get that rebound to your striker, but no rebound needed for Desari, a third of this game completed. Takes his lead to three goals to nil. You've got to say, Stefano must feel a little bit deflated now. He came into this game, he needed to be confident, he needed to come out from the block from the start. And that goal would have not helped him at all. Can he bounce straight back? That's what's key. The best players can do that. No, he cannot. You can see Stefano there just getting a little bit agitated with what's going on on the screen, not too happy. Needs to stay focused. There's still a long, long time him to get back in this game. He saw the match yet against Marcuso. Went to extra time, didn't it? Yeah, it was super tight game, that one as well. Late winner from Stefano. Knocking out the Manchester City man. Sorry again now. Cristiano Ronaldo. Into it. All the time in the world on the edge of the box. He's happy just to play out wide and try and bring others into attack. desari has been fantastic since probably ESWC when we first saw him this year. Well, better and better, and I think a few players were asking, who are you, you know, who are you practicing against? Main just says his coach. I'm sure the rule will be in there as well. Yes, there are different consoles, but we can see now 
There, Mr. Sari can play on both. Yeah, seems very, very comfortable on his preferred console, which is the Xbox, but on that PlayStation 4, put on a clinic against the final. And here he comes again, Pogba. Just see, so, so happy, possession. so happy to keep possession. Play left, play right. Look like you're going to attack. Then just do it all again. And that leaves questions to Stefano. Do I go and press that ball? Do I pull out a man from my defence? He's going to try and get through there. Oh, no. Wow, that could have been disastrous for Stefano at the back. 64% possession on the 40th minute Desari had. Remarkable stats to be able to keep the ball. Since that goal went in as well, Richard, that Stefano... Looks a little bit deflated. Seems a little bit... He's lacking confidence. If any time there's to believe in himself, I think there's a little bit of hope. This is it. The biggest stage in the O2 Arena. The two best players in the whole world. On this FIFA 18 competitive season. And we're in half-time nearly. Added time of two minutes. Stefano, try and defend this one. Get yourself into half-time. Have a word with your coach. And maybe make something to change. Go through at the back occasionally. Desari is probably about six minutes away from winning $250,000. You can see <laughs> the, his family the there. The flags are out. I think what, it's great you said there. Six minutes of FIFA time. Anyone that's listening from home or wherever you listen to, you're thinking, oh, that's pretty easy, isn't it? Hold out a 3-0 lead, but the stoppage is in that as well. The stage that we're playing on, thousands of people here. And these were the highlights from that game. It was only one goal that was scored, and this was it. Watch that run from Thierry Henry. Went low driven. And I make it 3-0 there. Yeah, just looking at Desari on the stage as well, he looks really relaxed. Very comfortable right now. It's 3-0 up and Pina looks a little bit like a defeated man at this point. It's safe to say the UK crowd here, the Oturino are loving him as well. Now it's Desari. But there's still time, there's still a half. Just got to believe. And what do you think his coach will be saying to him right now? Desari's or Stefano? Stefano. You just saw a change from him. I think he went 3 4 2 1. He's got 45 minutes left of FIFA 18 as a competitively this year. This is the final game. He's still in that 4 triple do. I, I would have changed personally the, what's wrong with if you're going to lose, you may as well lose going out fighting, not carry on playing a 4 triple two and just get defeated. And of course, that's the trophy new for this year 20 million or probably even more. I <laughs> wanted to get their hands on that trophy. It was made specially for this tournament. It'll be the first name on the FIFA World Cup trophy as well. At the O2 Arena. And it just speaks, you know, volumes how fast this eSport is moving. The last time Saudi Arabia was successful in the FIFA Interactive World Cup, as it was then, 2015, in Munich. Mr. Dunn it was. Against Julian Dasseville in Munich, as you mentioned. And now it's rebranded as the FIFA e World Cup, and it's a new trophy. As you being that first name on there, for how long this competition lives on. The first name on that trophy. History. We it are is. watching history unfold right now at it's, the O2. It's being made right now. Or if Stefano Pinna got himself back, I'm sure that would be a historic final comeback, if, if it can happen. Yeah, you'd be playing it for years to come if Stefano can turn this game around. And what has the Belgian got for us? Recently just signed for PSV as well. Had such a good year. So is MS Tassari. Manchester champion. Played in a few other tournaments as well, such as the SWC in Paris. Football Cup in Paris as well. And now he's here on the big stage. And he's thriving off the crowd. Just happy to score more and more goals. The final needs to get that ball. Get a hold of it. Get himself a goal as soon as possible. Just to put that little bit of hope in his mind to think, right, I can get back in this game. There is still hope for me. Yeah, just looking at the there way Sarri is as well. Vieira. Elbows on the armrest, looks very, very comfortable. When he's playing at a desk as well, he likes to put his elbows he's on the desk. He's always happy as well, isn't he? He's always smiling. Stefano Pina, R9, just rushed the shot a little bit. He's got a lot of space if he wants to use it. Again, though, I think he's just rushing his chances. Yeah, look at me, he's getting visibly frustrated as well. He knows it. Time is slipping away, and this comeback is slowly, the chance of it happening, slowly, slowly decreasing. The pause has been queued by Mr. Sari. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see a formation change from Desire as well, maybe switch into a 4-3-3 second variation, we know he likes that. Something a little bit more defensive maybe that will work for him. Oh, he saw the idea there. And then also as Stefano Pina is coming forward, going attacking, ultra-attacking, if he's playing with a 4-3-3, then wide players are going to get in time and time again out wide. And that's where the game really does get killed off. Well, nearly 15 in-game minutes gone already. No goal scored, we will go into a pause as well for both of these players. We're expecting a change, maybe defensively, for Mestasari. And why wouldn't you when you're 3-0 up? Really late tackle there from Ruth Hullet. And we can see Stefano as well. So we're seeing the changes here into that 4-3-3 second variation, as we thought it would be, from MS Desari, press back line. Drift wide for him, and he's also reducing them custom tactics down as well. You see, what a venue the O2 is, Brandon. It's great as well, that so many people have come out as well to watch this huge final. The only change for Stefano Pinna. We shall see any second now, but... It's certainly a potential impact substitution. Yeah, he had a massive impact at the World Cup, killing Mbappe coming on the 97. Rated Mbappe. And we uh, still staying in that 4 triple 2 is Stefano. The 4 3 3 swap has been made by <laughs> MS Tassari. The change as well, Richard, for Mr. Sari. He loves to do it, and I can see why. Brings on a fresh Riera around this time in the game. Just to just drop into that CDM role. Just anchor in front of the defence, just move left to right, interceptions, the aggression that he needs, he's got the pace, the physicality as well late on in the game. A fresh Vieira, it's a great tactical change. And also Hazard, 99, and Suarez, 99, both festival football items that really changed up the meta in the game. They've added another couple of players that you can really play with in that attacking third. Vieira back to Neymar. This is Stefano Pinna now, trying to turn the edge of the box, nearly! You saw the idea there. Yeah, the clutch just not known with Stefano, has it? On another day, that might rebound to his striker. This time, it seems as though it's all with MS Tassari, as he clears his lines. It's positive, though, from Stefano. He really needs to take that chance, because as you can see, he's not going to get many of these chances against Tassari. Very good defensively. Happy to keep the ball in the right areas. Stefano will be pulled out of position. Gaps will appear behind. Next thing you know, it could be a Mr. Sari 4-0, 5-0. But yeah, as you said, Richard, there's no harm of going out and attacking and saying, all right, I tried, I tried this, I tried that. And if memory serves you correctly as well, in 2015, I believe it was 3-0, that Mr. Dunn won as well. So maybe that's the magic scoreline for Saudi Arabia. It was indeed. Paul Pogba. Stefano needs to get on this ball. Bassari will just strike again. He's waiting for his time to find that little gap. Vieira into the hullet nearly. Is this it? could be a chance. Maybe a chance. Ronaldo, one on one against Haya. It's a heavy touch. There. The next heavy touch. The timing of the keeper as well was key. Yeah, really, really well done from Bassari. Brought out the keeper forced him to make that decision, he either had to dink it or try and take it past him, and neither of them chances. two things. That's two chances, Richard. And that efficient this year. Everything has gone this Ari's way. And he has played well, he's been very clever. Always changing his play style. Always making a change with formation or key players that he likes to bring on. That Vieira that he brings on every time in that CDM. It's working wonders. Well, having that plan A, plan B, plan C, we've seen him switch into a 4 4 2 second variation the ball as well. Pogba now to make it 4 0. He's got different options in his locker that he can bring on. Probably being the best Xbox player this year. It's crazy. It's definitely to, since April. It's crazy to think that MS Desar is about a minute and a half away from winning $250,000. Huge money. Life changing sums of money and he'll be the best FIFA player from this season first name on the FIFA E-World Cup trophy he's coming again he wants another one Suarez into Hulli get that name on the trophy MS Nassari yeah great goal you see the favourite owner coming out from him runs down the line cuts
steps inside Ronaldo into Suarez, little back heel into Rude Hulley, and that seals the game. Signed, sealed, and delivered. MS Dasari. Such a mature performance in this final, of such big stakes. You know, it's so hard not to think about that huge prize, that huge trophy, the status that will come with winning this tournament. But that is where you have to look back at Manchester, you have to look back at key points in this FIFA 18 competitive season and then ask why. Why is he there? Why is he playing like this? Because he's a winner. He knows what he needs to do to get over the line. You have to say Stefano has kept many doubters quiet in this tournament. To be the second best or the best PlayStation player is a huge achievement. You saw last time, Dito, he came second, went and signed for Manchester City. Of course, Stefano's already signed for PSV. And one of the best Belgian players. Where's the best PlayStation 4 player in the world right now? Made it to the grand final in this cross console final with MS Dasari. Just a little bit too good for him. And it's a great story, MS Dasari. Brought his family over. All the way from Saudi Arabia, they've been here supporting him. All the way, brother, cousin, this goes on. We said we were going to give the trophy to him as a gift. That shows the sort of man that MS Dasari is. Joked about it before. Build this man a statue. I can guarantee that statue is getting Step pulled up right now in Saudi Arabia. And you can imagine as well at home the support he'll be receiving. He always gets a lot of support on the stream. Seconds away now. He will be a champion in London. MS Dasari. $250,000. And your first FIFA E World Cup champion. History is made in London. And a deserved winner as well. 2-0, 2-0 the score lines. There was nothing lucky about the game. He knew what he had to do and he did it. And he's getting a standing ovation from this crowd at the O2. What a final and a typical celebration of Mr. Star. We saw it in Manchester. He is a champion. A world champion, let's remember. And as you said, commiserations to Stefano Pinna. Fantastic tournament for that man. Should be so proud of himself so far. He's done so well this year. Yeah, it looked like just one game too far for Stefano Pino. He didn't have what it took in the end to compete with MS Desari, both on the Xbox and then on the PlayStation 4. But back to the winner. What a year it has been for him. An incredible year for the Saudi Arabian who performed well in Manchester, performed well in a number of tournaments this year, and then to round it off this year with that. That new trophy you can see in the background on the screen there. But let's take a look at the final. Let's have a look how it all one. planned out. And now the Saudi Arabian will be walking away from London. $250,000 richer. So 2-0 up at this point from the first leg then. Blazing tier on Ria, that right attacking mid spot. That's what you get with a fourth triple two. You get good width. Low driven shot across the goalkeeper. And then he did make it four and really put the nail in Pina's coffin late on. You can see all the spectators there that have come out in numbers today. So watch this grand final, watch the best FIFA players in the world that have been just superb. This was the chance of Stefano. Heroic defending. He just There's panicked a little bit there, didn't he? Obviously, time was running out for him, chances weren't going to fall to him. Throwing the bodies in front of the, in front of the ball. And this was the other chance, Richard, that we looked at. Ronaldo was on the edge of the box, played inside. Maybe could have took another touch, potentially out of his feet and tried going near post. And then there was this one. He found himself in so much space. Cristiano Ronaldo made the runner off. Ramos, Ramos committed, and sometimes when you have so much time to think about a chance like that, you just, you just, you do panic. Well, Desari had one in the first game. Exact same opportunity, Ronaldo going through, and then this one, the goal that did seal it. Lovely little piece of skill, the fake Rabona coming out from just MS Desari. It. Played one more, finesse, pull it. And that was when the name, you could say, was already on the trophy. MS Desari from Saudi Arabia, you can see when that fourth goal went in, they knew it was all over. A proud family, and I'm sure thousands back at home will be watching this and going absolutely crazy. There's his celebration, the trademark MS Desari celebration. But this is how it all planned out then. PlayStation leg, two goals to nil. And of course, Stefano was behind at that point. Yeah, 2-0, two 2-0, nil, two nil, both on the PlayStation and the Xbox. Clean sheet for MS Desari, and that's how he won the FIFA E-World Cup 2018.
And that is it for this season. The FIFA World Cup champion has been found, and that's Emes Tassari. Back to Laura and Spencer. Guys, thank you very much. Right, this is it. 20 million people entered, and now we, ha we have our winner. Please welcome to the stage the winner of the FIFA E-World Cup Series. It's Emes Tassari. <laughs> And Spencer is alongside me to, uh, to announce him the trophy. Off you go. Congratulations. Just pop that down for a moment. I know you don't really want to take, a, take it out of your hands yet, but just sum up how you're feeling. You've done it. You've won. I can do you. <laughs> you are the winner. How are you feeling? I'm really proud that I made my country proud. That's my first day. What will this mean to your country, Saudi Arabia? You can see I'm uh, proud that I made them proud. It's very the trophy. There are your friends and your family and your cousin as well, who was your coach. Do you want to say thank you to him too? Yeah, I just say to them that I'm, a great, I'm very grateful that he's here with me. Does it feel real yet? Because you are the winner. You are the FIFA E World Cup champion. Actually, first of all, this is uh, my, my second event in the UK and uh, second winner. So I think this is my second home. <laughs> okay. You've done tremendously well. At 18 years old, is this the start of the MS Tassari era? Are we going to see you winning it again next year? What do you think? Hopefully, my aim every year to make my country proud. And I hope every year I am the champion again. You've done tremendously well. Listen, congratulations. We'll come back to you in a moment. But let's have a word from the runner up. He's with you, boy. Thank you, Laura. I'm here with uh, Stefano Pina. Stefano, commiserations on your loss. But I mean, uh, talk me through that match. How did that go for you? Yeah, it was uh, difficult for me, especially uh, the, on the Xbox side. Uh, on the PlayStation side, I uh, don't score uh, my chances, and he did well. So, uh, yeah, deserved the winner, and uh, congrats to uh, Dosari. Now, how was it play on Xbox? Were you comfortable with the controller, or was it a bit difficult? Uh, it was difficult, uh, not, uh, yeah, it was just difficult on the Xbox. Now, what did you find that was difficult to play against uh, Desari? Like, what was it? Was it the defense? I, do, I know that he was, uh, his pressure was amazing. It seemed like he always had, like, a last-ditch tackle coming in from somewhere, even if you had a shot on goal. Yeah, he didn't let me, uh, he didn't uh, let uh, play my game style. Because of his, uh, because of his uh, pressure, so uh, yes, and, he, and his defense is amazing. So, uh. and I know you're probably, you know, you're feeling down, but I don't think you should be uh, too sad because, of course, not a lot of people were talking about you before this tournament, and you did make it all the way to the final with fifty thousand dollars. I mean, uh, I know that Belgium is watching. What would you like to say to the fans back home? Uh, I want to thank all my fans uh, for supporting me, and uh, yeah, I can't go all the way, but uh, I'm proud of myself. So, unfortunately, Stefano Pina is the runner-up to Emma Sassari, but there's nothing to be ashamed about because he did make his country and PSV Esports proud. Now, let's go back to Spen uh, sorry, Laura on the stage. Thank you, G-Boy. Absolutely, you should be very proud because he is runner-up out of 20 million people. Alongside me is the winner, MS Dasari. Let's just concentrate on your game because across two legs, considering the fact you also played on the console you're not most comfortable with, you didn't concede any goals. I'm actually pro at both consoles, and I think I, I defend uh, very well on both games, and I deserve to be two games clean shit. Yeah. Very well done indeed. Listen, you've got the trophy. You've said you want to share it as a gift with your family. But the big question is, what are you going to do with this $250,000? I haven't decided yet. My aim every year to get more trophies. This year I got two, and last year I got one. And hopefully every year better and better. Nice. Your name is going to be on that trophy. It's actually going to be engraved on it. Does that mean a lot? 
Yeah, it's actually going to be very uh, amazing besides the other trophies I get. What was it like picking it up? Because we weren't allowed to touch it earlier and Spencer was only allowed to hand it over to you. Oh, you mean it's heavy or not? No. Pick it up, go on, give it another go. No, no, no. <laughs> I think they like that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really amazing and uh, it's an honour, you know, to be the first uh, guy to hold the new trophy. Your parents are watching at home. Have you got a message for them? Can I say that in Arabic? أتمنى يا أبوي أمي إني أكنكم إني أسعدتكم اليوم وإن شاء الله دائم أسعدكم قد ما أقدر وللي كل دعمني وساندني هذه هدية لكم. All right, ladies and gents, we're going to have one more trophy lift. Please put your hands together for the FIFA E World Cup champion, MS Desari. All right, let's hand back over to Chew Boy, who's with some of our semi-finalists. Thank you, Laura. Now, I'm here with uh, Marcuse from Man City and Kurt from Malta, uh, the best hair in FIFA Esports and the best personality in FIFA Esports. Now, Marcuse, what do you think about that final? Do you think that Desari deserved to win? Well, um, it was a very good final. Um, Dasher was amazing. Um, I think it's deserved that he won the whole thing. Now, do you think Stefano, if you were Stefano Pina's shoes, what would you have done differently, you think, to counter Desari's style? Well, um, it's very hard to say when you don't sit in the chair, um, but I wanted to change the formation in the halftime of the second game. Maybe a more offensive play, uh, play style and formation. Um, but yeah, it's very hard to say. I think uh, Pina knows what he's doing. Now, Kurt, you unfortunately lost to Dasari in that semi final. Uh, what is so different about him when you played him? Like, what makes him, you know, you were blowing through their opposition uh, before you met Dasari. What was it about him that you found so tough to play against? You know, he's a top quality player. Um, he keeps the ball really, really well. Um, scores some questionable goals against me, but I think it's a deserved winner, 100%. Now, did you expect him to go all the way? I know he's been in FIFA 17. He was a, he was a champion there in terms of uh, the previous events and then FIFA 18. Did you expect him to go that far before the tournament? I mean, after he beat me, for sure, yeah. Now, this is going to be a controversial question, but I know in the past a lot of players, a lot of the champions come from the Xbox side. Do you think uh, that the PlayStation side will ever see a champion, or is it just always going to be Xbox? Always going to be Xbox. Always going to be Xbox. Marcuse, what do you think about that? I mean, you play on the PlayStation. Uh, is there a difference between the, the talent pool on both consoles, or is it just uh, lucky that Xbox did win at the end? Well, um, I played one game last year on the Xbox, and I won 6-1 in finals, so, yeah. Wow, uh, very interesting debate that I'm sure a lot of you guys will have in the chat. Xbox or PlayStation, either way, Dasari is the champion of the 2018 FEWC. Now let's head back to Spencer and Laura on the stage. Thank you very much, Chubo. You can see the MS Dasari with his media team, with his family and friends taking the trophy out for a little run around. The media attention there is absolutely incredible, Spencer, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of interview interviews to do now, I'm sure. Uh, saw him sort of embraced by Brent Koning before that, the EA commissioner as well, and uh, he's a worthy champion, and I'm sure he'll do the role proud. Brilliant. Okay, let's hand you back over to our commentary team. Thank you very much, guys. And it's crazy to think now that this is the end of the FIFA 18 competitive season. We, all st we started out back in October, November last year. All we saw was the FIFA 3 World Cup. What is this going to be? We saw the whole structure of the Global Series. And now, months later, we have a champion from Saudi Arabia. And he's going to be a hero for at least the next few hours, for the next years to come. His name will be on that trophy first as well. And he'll be taking pictures with that trophy all night long. Yeah, for the next year, he's the champion. He's the defending champion. Hopefully he's back next year. Hopefully he has a good FIFA 19. He's back on the sticks to uh, defend his crown. But what a performance that was. 2-0, 2-0. Very mature performance. He kept possession really well. Finished when he needed to. Might have got the rubber green with a, a couple of lucky decisions that went his way. Stefano had a couple of chances that he just didn't take in the end. But you can't question it. He's the, the worthy champion. It's a crazy story because it is a tale of two halves of Mr. Sarri. You could say the, the half of the, the game cycle of FIFA 18, he was nowhere really to be seen in the competitive structure. This second half, he's been everywhere. We saw, as we say again and again, we saw him at ESWC in Paris, picked up third place there, went to Manchester, the rest was business there. And then from then, he just consistent, consistent, consistent. Obviously, we don't know the story behind that, but it's, it's great to think that someone like maybe not Megabit that was consistent from day one 
yes, he got to the grand final and he deserved that, but well, it's just crazy how it all works. Just look at the story of the, the finals, the final opinion. It wasn't really that much of a favourite coming into the competition. Desari was, a lot of people said he well, could, could win it, but it weren't the, the name on the tip of your tongue, that was Nicholas. Well, it doesn't was... matter how you got here, it matters what you do over the course of three days. And over the course of the three days, Desari has been the best player. Well, this was the grand final going through it, right from the beginning, from leg one. The German demon weren't commentating on, which was a 2-0 uh, win on MS Desari's away console. This chance here, Stefano Pinat, the exact same chance. I don't know what it is, when you have loads of space, you want on with the keeper, it's just panic. You, you think about it too much, you think, do I try and take it around him, do I try and dink it over him? Do I open up my body and do a load of finesse? And this was the goal that kicked things off in the final. 37 minutes on the clock. Barely any reaction. He knew that this was just the start. And that was Arnaud Ronaldo running away and kicking off this final in style. To have the confidence, though, that he did, the composure for $250,000 he was playing for. It was like just a little weekend league like game to him. It was like a group game for him. Yeah, he only did lose one match throughout the, the competition, I believe, and that was in the groups. I think against Gorilla, in fact, so... Remarkable, remarkable story for him. And how many times do you have to say it? Deserved winner, you can see how much it means to him, his friends and his family, and just turning around now, the swarm of people around him still there, taking pictures with fans, media organisations. And then this was game number two, Rich. Obviously, Stefano at this point, 2-0 down, needed to start well. Played really well for the first 25 minutes, and that happened. Destructed all Stefano's plans, unfortunately. Yeah, 30 minutes in, brought the deadlock in the second leg. If Stefano would have scored first, we could have had a serious game on his hands. But as soon as that goal went in, you saw Stefano. His mood changed, and Mr. Sarri knew that pretty much game over. If I keep the ball, how I know I can. There's not been much room how oh, many chances that Stefano does get. He did have a couple though, Brandon. He did indeed, this was one of them. Bit of space there, of course. Look at the defender here. A little bit. I'm not saying that chance should be going in, but could have maybe used it better. And then he had another few chances after that, Richard. Yeah, this one here played, it was into uh, R9, first time on the left foot. It's one of them though, obviously Neymar was lurking at the back post. Sometimes that yeah. Sometimes that had rebound to Neymar. And then this one, this was like Mr. Sarri's in the first game. Broke the offside track really well. This touch right here, it's just too heavy. You need to let go of RT or R2, whatever you're on PS4 or Xbox One, and just slow down a little bit. Wait for the goalkeeper to get close and then just slowly past him. But talking about the pass, this was the final goal. Fate Rabona into Suarez. One more to Hullington. That sealed the deal and not for many the man people from Saudi. would do that extra pass, Richard. This is the difference when you're sitting at home probably thinking, I could easily win £250,000. It's completely different when you're at uh, the O2 Arena, first and foremost. You've got, you know, incredible numbers here, fans making noise when you're winning or losing. And to play that one more pass in such a big game, as we said again and again, to put your name on that trophy, he deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, we run out of superlatives to describe his performance throughout the tournament. It was really, really fantastic. It just, it just seemed composed, it just seemed comfortable throughout the tournament, really. And that final, some players would crumble there. MS Tassari did not crumble, he stood tall. And like I said, that statue's got to be getting put up now in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you have to say, Richard, obviously, this is the last game of the competitive season for FIFA 18. It's been a pleasure, obviously, to cover a few of the events alongside a fantastic talent team and broadcast team. Um, and it's just crazy to think that now this is it for FIFA 18. We've had a champion, and now everyone, or a lot of people that even make this event, will be waiting for FIFA 19 to come along. Yeah, FIFA 19 just around the corner, but one person who still has something to say, Laura Woods. Thank you very much, boys. Uh, we're going to have loads more reaction after the break. Let's just have a quick confirmation then of the scores. You can see it there. MS Dasari with a 2 0 win in that first leg, and then 2 0 in the second leg as well, winning 4 0 overall, Spencer. Pretty amazing, really. Uh, the prize money he will win $250. Thousand dollars. We're going to be handing that over shortly, but also fifty thousand dollars for the runner-up, which is not to be sneered at, is it? No, I mean it's more than double what the winner got two years ago. So it's a fantastic uh, piece to take, take, take home with you. But he won't be happy because he was so close to winning the whole thing. And I think maybe on a different day he could have got some goals. He had a lot of chances there that didn't quite work for him. But um, 
To win 2 0 both legs, clean sheets, both legs shows uh, how good Desari is across both consoles. He's so happy. Look at him there with his trophy, going around posing for photos with people. People from the media coming over to take photos and interview him. And also children as well looking up to him. And there's Tass as well. He was in it a couple of years ago. He used to be on your team. In fact, a finalist last year too. Yep, and I'm sure he'll be back next year. There's loads of players who'll be even more hungry as a result of this. Uh, people like Gorilla, obviously, who won it last year and, and been dethroned, essentially. Um, no one can ever take away the fact that he won last year, but I, I know what Gorilla's like. He wants to be dominant in this scene. Yeah. He wants to leave a legacy, so he needs to go and get his hands on this trophy again. Brilliant. All right, loads more reaction after this quick break.